common trope in film to tell this story in which one person goes through this like period of crisis in which they like, aren't really flourishing and then they find this one thing that you know, makes them who they are, this one thing that they're called to do and, and so they end up being fulfilled as people by doing this one thing. And I guess I would just say I find myself really resisting that a lot. Um, I think the philosopher Meriton has some really interesting things to say about what it means to be an amateur, and that the word has love at its root, to do something for love of the thing. Places you don't want to go, and even places that look like they're okay, might in fact have, you know, rocks and hidden things, maybe even Scylla and Charybdis themselves. <laughs> like all in the French. <laughs> like you with that kind of thing in a sailing man. Like what? What are you most afraid of? Drowning, <laughs> um, losing someone overboard, having the boat sink in four minutes flat because we ran into a whale or a, a container man. ship or <laughs> getting run over by a container ship. I mean, or run into a container or um, a rocket ship piece falling on our boat. <laughs> you know, who knows? But I mean, I think, you know, these books that we read, I think in the Adrift book that we were reading, you know, one of the remarks was something like, the thing about being out at sea is that disaster can strike at any moment. When you become a parent, you move from this world in which things are sort of more or less even, more or less predictable, to a world in which like every minute is a state of emergency, right? Like for toddlers, like states of emergency happen every 30 seconds. You know, your, your toy breaks, it's an emergency. Your sibling wants something other than you want. It's, a, it's an emergency. You know, you can't get the cap off the water bottle and it's the end of the world, right? So like when you become a mom <clears throat> and you're a sailor mom, like you suddenly start living in a world in which everything is a state of emergency. You're always on that edge. I mean, you know, it's just like this two, this two levels of being on edge as a mom of toddlers and a sailor. It's, it's a lot for one mind to bear. Three to four foot seas in the mooring field. We had an exploding avocado. Okay. Exploding avocado. down. Avocados exploding. <laughs> How did that happen? Everybody was a little bit shaken by this one. <laughs> We're kind of in the tail end of it now. Okay, how we've got, got word questions. Yeah. So, uh, I'm not, I'm, I'm getting to be very bad at asking questions. 
um, but I, I'm not terrible at getting you to talk. Um, are we going to give up? Never asked that question. No. You got one vote. The answer is no over here. Over here. <laughs> Well, I would say, with all of this chiming in around me, that to the extent that we are not going to give up, we do owe a lot of it to our children, who I think see more clearly than we do sometimes, and have more courage, and... Are young, and don't have have anybody but ourselves and our siblings to care about. Yes, you you are more carefree in a way, but you also have vision, and your vision is in some measure what we're out here trying to protect and trying to help you find. I mean, I think we've been trying to give up for like four years, and we haven't managed to succeed yet. That's the boss. One of the things that's in the background here is... um, you know, this wasn't exactly plan A in our life. <laughs> no. I think it was plan out of the alphabet. <laughs> <laughs> what you say? Oh. No, it's true. I mean, some people dream of this. Like, everybody always said, oh, you're living the dream. I'm like, what? What dream is that exactly? <laughs> funny thing is that at some level I don't entirely know what it is that makes me out here at once at once so happy and so joyful and so full of the possibility that the sea is and at the same time always some part of my brain is going back over there and trying to figure out some way that I can just move into a quiet space have a small dwelling in which the weather doesn't have as big of an impact on my life and where I don't wake up on a not infrequent basis with nightmares that the boat is sinking because we've taken a wake or something has shifted the motion of the boat in such a way as it feels like it's going you know bow down so can you tell me the story about how you were sitting down below and thinking you really want to be giving up and but what you found yourself doing was calling a rigger like can you recount that story because it was really funny so here's what we're gonna fix this very long tear on the edging of the sail got the sail got loose in the storm we see somewhere somewhere around here uh, the, the stitching went bad, so we're gonna just start here and work our way down. I don't remember what I told you. I don't know. Um, you said, I want to get if up, up, <laughs> I want to call a house, but uh, uh, who knows? I'm on a phone call trying to call a rigger. Just it's yeah. true. I mean, I don't understand why, Mommy, but I just... what's a rigger? Somebody who's going to come and inspect all of our stays Sorry. to make sure they're secure so nothing, the mast doesn't come crumbling down when we're sailing. Uh, anyway, I don't yeah. know. I mean, I would say I don't remember what, what, I, what the story was that I was yeah. telling, but I think I was... I just... I keep feeling like I'm, like I'm almost sort of overtaken in my actions like I keep want like my mind my mind is going to this place where I'm just like how can I find a way not to do this anymore like how can I find a way to go back to land how can I find a way to have some excuse not to do this anymore either if not excuse like legitimate reason like there's got to be a legitimate reason for me to stop doing this and I, I think my mind is like always going to that place and then you know I'm I'm think I'm literally thinking about that while I'm picking up the phone like hey could you come inspect our rigging like next week so that we can go like WTF I mean I don't know why I'm doing that like I, I don't know why I'm why I'm picking up the phone calling the rigger <laughs> like I, I mean, it, it makes no sense but there you are I'm called the rigger we're getting an inspection you know we ordered all kinds of stuff we're, we got all the things coming that we need to go well he's just he kind of well 
this is all damage from my store last on, year. And the needle, it looks yeah. like it's pushing into the Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna open this one up to the whole family. What's on everybody's mind that we need to do to get to get ready to move? Yeah, what what do we need to do to prepare? Everybody needs to know how to sell this boat. We need to move the tiller because I can't steer the wheel. I mean, but beyond all of that, I mean, we have a long list of those things. We need to find somewhere in ourselves the strength and the courage and the humility to say, yes, we can do this. We can do this together as a family. If we have that, there'd be nothing stopping us. We need to, we need to get that. I wish it was just a bro project. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tell we all. We'll and just you could take it off. <laughs> can, can, we, can we order that off of Amazon? <laughs> Have them deliver it to Marina. It'll come in a little box. It'll say, belief in yourself. <laughs> we opened it up and like, we're good to go. Like, you Why is it, it so hard? What? Why is it so hard to believe in yourself? Well, I mean, I think that the, 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 the unfortunately, I mean, the unfortunate answer to that question, I think, is that our society has decided that fear is our greatest virtue. Um, not courage because you know when you're afraid you can be controlled you can be convinced to spend money there are lots of things that can be done very easily when you're afraid You went sailing today with Rue. What did you think? Well, I sat down to write a mini essay or a big essay, I don't know about it. And the first thing I wrote down was like, on sailing for the first time or something like this. And then I like crossed it out because I, well, that's not the first time I've been sailing. I mean, we've been sailing, like we sailed, you know, from, I don't know where to, I don't know where on the outside in the Gulf and, and it was 20 knots of wind and we were in turquoise waters and the boat was healed over and we were just flying, you know, like it's not Six the first knots. time I've ever been sailing. Um, and yet it kind of was the first time I've ever been sailing because my, my role on our boat has been largely below tending to little people and their needs and the galley, um, and so I don't know how to tie a cleat knot. <laughs> I didn't know t until today the difference between a tack and a jibe. Like I, I don't ever know what's going on on the boat when we're sailing. Um, and so it's just like a great big mystery, um, which is probably another thing that contributes to my constant sense of uncertainty and precariousness because I would literally not have a clue what to do on this boat if something happened to one of you guys to d disable you and like, you know, I had to take over. I mean, it'd be ridiculous. So something changed out there today where I could feel the water and the wind as something other than a threat. And I don't exactly know why that is, except that this thing that we've been talking about where being a parent of young children puts you in this state of sort of constant emergency or near emergency or potential emergency, um, so that you're just always on edge. Today out on the water for the first time in quite literally as long as I can remember, I had this experience of being free um of that anxiety like free of that constant sense that something either is wrong or is about to go wrong or could potentially be going wrong and i think today is maybe the first time where i was able to feel the water like feel the water passing under the boat feel the water moving the boat the wind moving the boat these elements working together in such a way as like the boat could move, it could go places, it could 
be itself and the thing that it's meant to be um, freely and without threat. What did you think? Like, what's, what's, the, what's the immediate reaction? There's the poetry of sailing. It's old as the world. In your own words, mama. <laughs> I just said, you know, a girl could live out there. And I was there, and I was participating, and and yeah, yes, you you do feel free out there. You feel free on the water in a way that you definitively do not anymore on land. I would say in a way it was just amazing, like it was just a totally life-giving, a totally life-giving experience. That's probably not the answer you were looking for. No, that is the answer I was looking for. I gotta like wrap it up I and mean, we need like a closing you know a closing like tie it tie it all together I'm thing tired. i mean i guess you know we come out here and we look really hard at what's standing in the way of us going um and like the fear just sort of lays it's uh, it just reveals its face like that's that's the thing that we've been running from it's and true. that's the thing that we are going to have to leave behind if we want to if we want to go anywhere it's true and of course the fear is i mean the fear it it is the gravitational force that you have to sort of break through with all of your might in order to get away from like it's it is so strong that force and it is so writ into the very fabric of everything that our society has become start really 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 wanting to give up and there are many days that I feel that somewhere buried deep inside of me that I don't acknowledge that probably contributes to my impatience <laughs> and my agitation level uh, but you know when I feel that then I just remember like, I remember I try to remember that there is something really vital out here that we are being called to find and that it is not going to be easy to find it and that it will be worth it <laughs> if we do, if we find it. Okay. I made my numbers for you. You can, can you get a number of practice for mm -hmm. me this late? Yeah. You're going to have to. Um, and let me, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, I'm just talking to you. I don't know what I think about. I have a pencil that you can talk to other people. I didn't, I didn't do all of them. I did some of them. But they're all right. Good job. There's not a single mistake in there, cattle. They're all the right direction, in the right order. Amazing. I didn't do the last ones because I knew I was going to mess them up.